uh, in this lecture what we have seen is that uh, in the previous lecture we get, we know how to calculate the uh, total uh, uh, I mean the ultimate bearing capacity then uh, difference settlement and also we will now see total settlement. Actually these settlement calculations bearing capacity improvement calculations are very important and we need to compare them with actual results also you know for example the design issues in many of these uh, mixes are uh, very important and uh, for which we need to understand some mechanics part of it like uh, say for example uh, the uh, total settlements how do you calculate in the case of uh, lime treated soils actually these me methods are you know, applicable to all types of uh, materials uh, uh, soil materials which are treated with uh, like say for example instead of lime columns you may have stone columns or anything they, there are people have developed at various times some design methods and uh, if you look at the literature um, the there could be different uh, design methods but one should understand that um, the all these methods are based on different theories and also a lot of practical experience and uh, the results from each method could be totally different but uh, what normal uh, practice is that people calculate uh, all the uh, values like you know ultimate bearing capacity then settlements then all that then predict with what is observed we will see that and um, the total settlement predictions are very important and uh, how do you do that is that uh, like you have a simple theory which is based on load distribution this is again uh, uh, an approximate elastic uh, solution theory in which like uh, the uh, the settlements is composed of uh, two components that we will see why this settlement uh, calculations required are essentially is that say for example the uh, water supply lines and sewer lines have a tendency like you know they cannot tolerate um, difference in settle uh, total settlements if the settlements are going to be higher in materials then they have a they have uh, they crack and all that break up. So, here you can see a simple diagram in which uh, the this is the loaded area you know this is all the loaded area you would like to calculate the settlements. What you assume is that the settlement is assume, assumed to be equal to the sum of the compression of the reinforced block actually this is the reinforced uh, block like uh, see the thing is this is all a st strong area compared to the rest of the area and we assume that th there is a settlement of delta h1 here right in the area and then it gets now there is nothing that exists here like most of the times there will be always a question that should i take it uh, to the hard stratum you know like should i say if the hard stratum is uh, 10 meet 20 meters should i take the length of the pile to 20 meters actually in most of the stone columns we will have this uh, or even piles we have this question but it's not necessary we have to calculate actually you know the, we know the depth of uh, pressure bulb concept that beyond certain uh, area loads may not come. So, if the loads are not coming here then there is no point. So, at least you need to re, you do not need to extend the columns to the bottom most uh, level that is uh, what the point is. So, uh, what we want to do is that you have to calculate this reinforced block uh, delta H1 settlement and also the compression of the underlying soil because of this load applied load it has two components delta H1 and delta H2 and uh, you are trying to calculate that. So, you can see that uh, the uh, load here is about uh, the load that is applied and then uh, load applied on each of this is it is a B is the area and L is that uh, whatever say for example, assume that uh, uh, it is a tank foundation or some rectangular foundation you have to put that B into L properly and it can be even a 1 meter length in the case of a payment uh, the highway embankment you can just uh, for um, uh, you know uh, take it as 1 meter and then do that or whatever right. So, here um, the applied this is a Q1 load that is applied onto this uh, block and then the, uh, we assume that the Q1 also acts here and uh, the now the load acting here is um, Q2 is nothing but the uh, Q minus Q1 you know whatever is that um, load and then how do you get this uh, say this is Q2 here Q1 
2 and then what is that it gets distributed here ok. So, that distributed load is in terms of the again as I said B plus H into L plus H it is like you know we assume that it is 1 is to 2 rule, uh, rule is followed. So, it is like uh, uh, you add on both sides this becomes uh, instead of uh, B into L this becomes B plus H into L into H. So, here the ok fine this is P ok. The compression delta H 1 depends on the interaction between the columns and the enclosed unstabilized soil. The measurements indicate that the compression of the columns is the same as the compression in the unstabilized soil between the columns. So, we normally say that uh, the settlements are you know we assume that you know because there is a um, you know it is a st uh, strain compatibility we call it measurements indicate that the compression of the columns is same as that of the unstabilized soil. What is happening is that load is coming more on the column than the uh, soil which means that uh, you know they you know the, the moment the load is applied there is uh, they do not have unequal settlements that is what it means. And um, there are two cases here when the applied load is very high such that the plastic limit of the column is reached like we call it highest load. And the second thing is the uh, applied load and the, and the deformation of the block are small so that the plastic uh, limit is not exceeded. Actually if the loading is higher or lower we have some analysis here some understanding of the analysis. As I just mentioned we have different ways of uh, doing this some of these issues. Uh, total settlement this settlement can be estimated by dividing the applied load into two parts Q1 and Q2 in which Q1 is a part carried by the columns and Q2 is a part carried by the enclosed soil. Q1 is a uh, column is dependent on the actually this is a um, uh, it is not actually the creep limit it is uh, the limit like uh, you know plastic limit of the soil it is the CUL of the CUL of the of the stabilized soil. If you know the um, bearing capacity the CU of the uh, stone column uh, no uh, the lime column treated lime column say for example, you get some uh, uh, 10 kp soil uh, un, un, uh, I mean say 20 kp or something you may get 100 kp as that uh, treated material here 100 into 0 0.7 70 kp would be the uh, load ok that is the limit the settlement d has to caused by the q2 can be calculated from the consolidation test and test samples. Actually as I just mentioned in the previous class yeah this is a soil is there and then this is a sand, uh, the, uh, the lime column material is there. The lime column material has some settlement and the stone also this uh, this uh, the uh, lime in between the two uh, lime columns also the soil the soil between the two lime columns also is uh, clay. So, what it does is that that uh, that uh, settlement delta H2 caused by the load can be calculated from the consolidation settlements and other samples is another important point that one should see. And uh, case 2 is a relative stretching of the columns with respect to the enclosed unstabilized soil will govern the stress distribution. So, what we do is that uh, in the second case uh, what I just mentioned previous let me go back. First case when the load is applied such that the uh, uh, plastic limit of the soil is reached. Second case is the loads are small. So, you are essentially calculating the loads when they are uh, higher in this form like q1 and q2 calculate in this uh, particular expression and uh, delta 2 you calculate essentially that. Uh, what you are essentially seeing is that yeah um, you are essentially calculating the q1 uh, q2 loads under these conditions. Uh, when the load is very high and when you know uh, when the load is somewhat lesser. So, in this case uh, yeah q 1 and q 2 is uh, you know settlement from this uh, material <coughs> use this and q 2 is uh, calculate the settlements uh, because of the uh, soil layer beneath the stone uh, the lime columns. The other way is that if the uh, as I said case 2 when the total load is somewhat very less. What we do is that um, 
the relative stress of the columns with respect to the enclosed unstabilized will govern the stress distribution uh, the difference is that uh, in the previous case uh, the so, the loads are so high that they, they are tested to, they go to plastic limit uh, conditions here loads being lower we try to use the elastic stress distribution type of thing like uh, the loads are shared or you have the concept of m coming into picture here so the settlement delta h1 of the reinforced uh, block will be governed by the compression modulus of the column material so delta h1 we call it and uh, q column is the average axial stress in the column into height is uh, column length and then m m is that factor that uh, we have to calculate which is nothing but the uh, uh, compression modulus compression modulus is say for example there is a, you know a modulus of the soil is going to be very very high that it takes all the load then uh, the load coming on the uh, uh, clay would be much less and uh, one can safely use the elastic uh, uh, stress theory concepts um, so this is one uh, case here delta h1 is nothing but the um, uh, this is nothing but q is a uh, uh, average axial stress into height divided by m m is nothing but the stiffness okay so what are you getting is that your this um, it's like um, the uh, you are you're essentially calculating this. So, these two have the same uh, uh, whatever units, then you get in terms of the uh, units of H, the delta H1. And results from the plate load test indicate that the compression modulus for the short term is about 300 uh, uh, of the un unconfined compression or the Q of the column. In fact, as I just mentioned, uh, you have maybe a 10 kPa for the uh, native soil but it, it it may be very high you know even 100 times also like it can be very big numbers they have done some plate load tests and they show that the compression modulus of the column for short term loading is about 300 q u call so which is quite high the model they are trying to relate modulus modulus how do you get modulus you will get from plate load tests okay so like as i said um, you also have in literature if you want to get E value, E is 10 times Q u or some sort of equations we have seen that. Uh, say for example, we have some more equations in literature where if you know the uh, uh, strength properties you can uh, relate it to stiffness, this is something like that. So uh, results due to consolidation the value decreases with time to approximately half the initial value, Q l is the ultimate uh, unit strength of the columns. So, the compression modulus of the enclosed unstable soil can be obtained as um, this is another one like this is another simple uh, uh, say in the case of 4 consolidated soils this is a simple equation that m soil is 250 times cu ok. So, even for normally consolidated soils you can get uh, some expression what it means is that um, if you know the uh, you know you are trying to do a what is that a consolidation test and uh, you can do a consolidation test uh, and you can uh, from the consolidation test result you can get uh, this uh, modulus because uh, whatever are the wide ratio the strain you can calculate because you have initial height of the sample it has a final height. So, you are trying to you can calculate one m value there because you can calculate the stress and the strain right stress by strain can be calculated and that gives m and for the same sample if you do a an unconfined vein shear test there itself no, no, say vein shear test for the same consolidated sample you will have an equation one can get an equation like that that is what people have been doing like uh, even we did in our laboratory this, some of these experiments where uh, you have a consolidated sample and then you have a uh, you can have from uh, two between two pressures say for example from 100 kPa to 200 kPa there is some sort of uh, compression that is going on and then that compression you know that can be converted to shear strain and you know the total stress applied total stress by total strain can give you a modulus right. Say for example, 100 to 200 uh, the 100 kPa is a total stress divided by the strain that it has gone undergone. So, for example, 10 uh, divided by you know uh, 100 MPa divided by 0 0.1 give you some 2000 as a modulus right. So, 2000 uh, kPa which means 2 MPa is the modulus. So, that if you really do a test there you will get uh, some factor like this. So, 
one should be very careful with this, some of these factors and um, this is one important thing. And you can have some sort of similar relationships actually if you just look at Bowles book and many other standard books you have a lot of literature on this. So, uh, as I just mentioned the uh, when the uh, soil is under elastic state and whatever um, or when the load is not going to be very high the uh, equal deformation of the soil and columns we are expecting and uh, loads the uh, following relationship must be satisfied it is like q 1 q 1 into B L divided by n A column into m col column you know the area of the column and the uh, stiffness of the column should be equal to q 2 into B L by B L minus n A col and m soil you know essentially we are trying to uh, see that the this is the stiffness of the soil this is the stiffness of the column m you know, particularly compression modulus values. So, you are trying to balance that essentially and n is the number of columns and uh, area of the cross section area of the if the area is defined uh, if the area is defined you know if you have a uh, term called area ratio like we are doing this you know number of uh, columns say for example, 10, 10 piles you have and their area of cross section to total area this is say how much of percentage of the area has been uh, replaced with uh, the lime it, lime column material is it a 10 percent or 15 percent one can use that ok. So, essentially uh, what you are trying to do is that the you are trying to estimate uh, uh, settlements you know so actually the some expressions we are having here and the same delta h 1 you can have a simple expression in this form uh, and you also calculate the uh, uh, settlements q 1 is a transfer to the block. Yeah, the uh, case one they gave again the total load that uh, how much is uh, transferred there is a two cases here ok one can. So, there are some sort of simple calculations one can you know make and actually why these calculations are important is that you should know what you are doing it is essentially like these are all very simple calculations I mean may based on some simple assumptions whether like uh, as I just mentioned in the case of uh, stone column that you have two theories one is based on um, elastic theory the other one is based on uh, uh, somewhat limit equilibrium analysis. Uh, so, you have to compare the values of uh, settlements strength improvement and all that because uh, soil soil mechanics is quite uh, you know uh, you know the very tricky in the sense that uh, uh, for the same uh, problem uh, for the same problem. Uh, there are different ways of solving the uh, so solving it and you have you want to have the elastic theory one have one can have limit equilibrium methods of analysis one can use a finite element analysis there are different ways. So, essentially one must be very clear about different methods of analysis and then finally, measure it in the field that is what people should do. So, these are one type of doing that or uh, particularly for uh, columnar inclusions. Uh, the, there are certain quality control measures one should do uh, like particularly in this uh, uh, lime column arrangements the lime columns uh, the flow I mean how much of lime is coming into the material should be measured and uh, sometimes there could be a problem of uh, you know they have it is a chemical material the continuous flow the, the material should be cleanly coming into the particular column and then you know it should uh, form you know you just put it and then compact it and then finally, it forms a column. So, the, dist the distribution of uh, lime in the columns and the water content samples obtained with auger boring must be checked. In fact, you should be able to do some sort of um, checks in which uh, how is the distribution of lime columns is uh, you know uh, migration of the lime is there and you know is the lime distribution satisfactory and all that one can see. And one can calculate uh, uh, the distribution of uh, uh, lime or the diffusion of lime based on the water content. Actually what happens? if the liquid if the water content of the sample is uh, very high in the beginning and immediately after you start finding out the water contents after the lime column installation if there is a good reduction in the water content definitely it means that uh, there is a diffusion of lime next to the uh, lime column. So, uh, even uh, some some more methods suggest, suggest that you have to check 1 to 3 percent of the columns for with SPT. Uh, or even plate load test and all that and uh, 
one should even vent testing should be done. Essentially, what we are trying to do is that we are trying to have too many, we are had uh, too many assumptions in so geotechnical engineering. We would like to see if whatever we assume are trying to are, uh, are satisfactory and we have to make some corrections for that. Then check the strength and deformation properties of the stabilized uh, soil in a few columns with few in situ tests. Say for example, uh, once the lime treatment uh, or the you know the for example, uh, the lime columns are put, you may, you may have to do a plate load test uh, like uh, say for example, you know you have seen the IR, the, the IS code on stone columns, they recommend plate load test similar to that. You can you have to do plate load test uh, on a single column or a three column or a, some different columns arrangements, one should check whether the strength improvement is there, you know whether in terms of the load displacement curves or the plate load test you can get deformation properties also one can get. So, this is a very important quality control check and this forms a very important uh, contribution here. Uh, I would like to highlight to you another important uh, simple method on how do you find out uh, some of these uh, things. Actually as I just mentioned uh, in uh, ground improvement we know how uh, we know that you have to improve the ground and then you have to have varieties of treatment. But finally, you should have a rough idea of how to calculate things, how bearing capacity is improved or strength is improved. So, what I would be discussing would be a method to evaluate again strength and stiffness gain or the increase. Uh, the, the method is simple here like uh, what I am trying to do is that this is the E log P curve of the uh, in situ soil before treatment. Okay. And, uh, E naught is the initial void ratio like you know, so this has uh, uh, some uh, this thing uh, P C already and um, once what I do you know because of the lime addition what is going to happen is that there is a reduction in water content. Because of the reduction in water, in water content what happens the void ratio will decrease because we have this formula right E S is uh, E S gum uh, the simple expression relating water content and void ratio. So, the void ratio comes down. So, as per the water void ratio you have an improved P like earlier it was this much P uh, P C it was and then it, it now you have added load. So, the load has increased from this to this. So, that is what it means. So, the delta P is uh, what is called the F equivalent effective pressure increase due to void ratio reduction is delta P is P, uh, this P dash minus P C. So, this is one thing. So, we know the uh, uh, how this expression is simple that you know you know that C C, C, C is uh, nothing but the um, uh, rate the delta E divided by you know the delta of the uh, d log p you know d e by d log p is a uh, c c. So, use that expression and then you know you put it into uh, this uh, convert back the equation you will get delta p equal to p c into 10 power uh, d e divided by c c minus 1. The c c you have already you have the e log p curve for the sample and then c c could be 1 uh, c c is one uh, variable and your d delta E is already known because of the line treatment. So, you will get what is the equivalent pressure. So, this is an important calculation because um, this helps us to calculate how much of uh, if you know how much of uh, pre consolidation pressure is there extra load is there you know how to calculate extra how much of extra strength gain is there. I will show you by an example here. Uh, there is a simple method that was given. Uh, see the method the uh, the area was treated by lime columns and we know what is the area ratio is nothing but um, you know if you take a square grid pattern like pi d square by 4 or pi d pi d not square by 4 is the area of a single column s square is the area of the grid in a square pattern so this area ratio like it could be 0 0.1 0 0.2 and whatever is a number it is one area ratio and for example I am taking an area ratio of the piles delta is 1 say for example, I am taking a 0.4 meter as a diameter of the pile and the spacing is 1 meter. So, I will get A p as 0.1256. So, what it means is that uh, you have uh, 1 meter spacing and then uh, stone column uh, diameter is 0.4 the A p is 0.1256. Okay. Then 
there is a simple there is an expression for reduction water content you know the thing is we know that uh, there is a, a change in water content because of the lime addition. So, if you know that water content change then uh, it is quite useful. So, there is an expression here uh, actually the, this is based on heat of hydration other things and uh, in fact in it is given in literature and uh, actually this how is it you get is that reduction water content of the treated soil is nothing but it needs initial water content in this case you know I am just taking it as 80 percent okay this water content I am taking as initially water content is very high maybe this water content is exists in the Vizag soil or some some place in east coast or west coast and unit weight of the soil is 18, 18 I have taken and H is the absorption of uh, value of the water by lime column and depends on the additives used in preparing the unslaked lime aggregates. Actually there is a value see this H value is something this is all known like we know the initial water content gamma T is the unit uh, weight of the treated soil and um, this factor is something that uh, uh, H and uh, some of these factors we should get. H is absorption value of water by the lime column depends on the additives used and we take a value of 0.3 here. Then uh, gamma C is the unit weight of the chemical lime in fact uh, the chemical uh, the uh, lime or the calcium oxide the way unit weight is quite low maybe 1 to 2 ton per meter square meter cube sorry meter, meter cube porosity of the lime column after chemical uh, reaction we assume that the porosity you know because of the uh, wide ratio increases right wide ratio increases if you uh, put the lime because it becomes more aggregated than the parallel uh, uh, plated. So, E V is another expansion ratio of the lime column this is another value is taken as 0 0.75 and S R is the degree of saturation after the pile, lime pile after treatment. Initially we assume 100 percent, but once you treat uh, uh, the soil with lime what happens is that the wide ratios uh, the wide it becomes more wide like you know because of the particle uh, aggregation and we use a degree of saturation of 80 percent and we know the unit weight of what is 10 kilo per meter cube. So, we put all these numbers here and you get a uh, water content change as something like 5.5 percent. So, initial water content is about 80 percent because of the addition of lime I got it reduced by you know by 5.5 percent and it is quite good I mean the thing is for which like um, now further, further I am trying to calculate say for example, the uh, uh, new wide ratio what is the initial wide ratio initial wide ratio is nothing but 2.16 because 2.7 into 0.8 okay that is 2.16 and now new wide ratio I can calculate and this delta p how much is that one can calculate and uh, p c you know where it is changing that it is 100 and one can use some term yeah. So, the so the delta p is about 76 kPa which is quite good. I mean the thing is just by adding lime and uh, you know I just uh, uh, made an effect of you know like about 75 as 86 80, 75 kPa extra load I have applied which is something like you can compare with any other thing you know the thing is you have you know about surcharge methods and other things and uh, you know to apply a surcharge of this you know you need uh, you know 4 meters height of surcharge and it is uh, consolidation is only occurring there you know but then here you have chemical changes also soil is improved and all that and cc numbers i have calculated and another one that i would like to show you is that the strength of the increased strength of the soil like initially there is some strength you know and i was I, you know su by p dash is another variable like um, which is actually uh, established for many clays and uh, if you see in bowles book also it's given like you know for various types of clays like uh, if you want to construct an embankment on a soft soil what is the uh, 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 how much of load you should do. You have a, what is called SU by P dash equations which are say for example, point two, SU by P equal to 0 0.3 or 0 0.2 or something people say uh, it is there in literature and in this case I have taken it as 0 0.3 actually. So, if I take SU by as P you know it is nothing but the ratio of shear strength divided to overburden pressure you know it is actually one can get this equation uh, in uh, this thing shear strength will be say for example, uh, 30 kPa and the uh, overburden pressure is 100 kPa. If I go to a depth of uh, 5 meters and uh, 5 meters into 20 is 100 and if I measure, uh, measure the strength there it will be 30 kPa what it means is that. 
So, that value if I put and then the delta p is also known. So, one I will get this as shear strength increase you can see that uh, the uh, yeah. yeah then I, I need to get this uh, a treated soil strength is uh, there and uh, so then what is the strength of the composite ground is another important variable. Yeah, there is a, I think uh, you have to substitute some other number. So, you will get some uh, whatever you know these are all simple steps one can have to have the calculations here and uh, now the next objective is to get the improved strength of the ground. Again we are trying to use a very simple formula which is again based on the area ratio and uh, I just mentioned the, a few minutes back that the strength of the uh, uh, lime treated ground could be higher you know 10 times higher like if it is 20 kPa for lime it can be 200 times here. So, uh, that same number you know one can use here like uh, it is SP here area ratio so there, there we, we have got some point 0.1256 as area ratio which is nothing but the ratio of lime uh, piles in the 1 meter square area. So, that is 0.1256 into 200 into 1 minus this, this thing. So, you will get some good increase. Okay. So, one can uh, estimate even uh, the uh, settlement pre consolidated settlement how much of settlement you have accelerated here because you removed water right. So, I mean what is that preempted settlement is you know if you uh, take the HC as the thickness of the soft soil it, the, it is about 470 mm here one can have all these calculations done and it comes. Then there is another uh, uh, addition here. So, what it means is that uh, you have to calculate the drained modulus of the treated soil also like um, ES is the drain modulus of untreated soil actually it is uh, because untreated soil is quite poor I say it is about 10 MPa and uh, all these area ratios are then n equal to stress distribution ratio it is a 10 is what uh, uh, some companies say and then this leads to 21.3 MPa 10 MPa has become 21.3 MPa. You know, so what you are trying to do is that there is an increase in uh, strength, uh, so there is an increase in uh, stiffness. So we have used the simple mechanics of uh, soil mechanics and trying to use the elastic theory, as I just mentioned. Like uh, uh, yeah, you are essentially trying to use uh, the simple theory of uh, getting this. I uh, you know if you know the in situ. Uh, E log P curve of this and some assumptions we make some assumptions it is possible for us to calculate the strength gain as well as stiffness gain which can be used in um, our calculations right. Now I would like to describe uh, a, a few case studies um, one is it is actually a case study in uh, uh, Malaysia. Uh, the it was constructed in about 2000 and uh, in this case 400 mm diameter lime piles were installed at 1.7 meter center to, uh, to center spacing to increase the st uh, strength and modulus okay. Like an example that I just discussed one can uh, use that uh, method to check this. In fact, uh, see nowadays what is happening is that there are methods uh, there are uh, methods that are well established by the companies you know like as I just said the for stone columns uh, the company Keller has one uh, method that is going to be Pribes method okay. and uh, so they find that it is very uh, uh, appropriate for the way that they are doing the things. So, similar to that the previous method which I just discussed was given by some other company and uh, some other uh, authors also followed it in this example. So, for example, I will show you the purpose of the lime treatment was uh, uh, very uh, clear here to increase the passive resistance and reduce the deformation. Say the lime piles what they do is that we uh, increase the passive resistance, passive resistance is that that like uh, you know uh, the um, uh, when the uh, the, uh, the uh, see the there is a uh, uh, 
reinforced soil so for example it increases passive resistance like uh, see the thing is that it reduces the movements movements of you know it restrains the movement in a passive way so it restrains the movement of the soil in a passive way so this is what is called you know say for example uh, if you put lime columns actually you know what the material they the, the or the, even the stone columns you know that's why if we use the concept of uh, cavity expansion theory where we calculate you know say for example uh, kp is a term that is used instead of the uh, uh, ka ka stands for the active earth pressure coefficient and kp stands for the pa passive earth pressure coefficient so if you insert that what is the trying to do is that um, the passive resistance is increased okay like uh, you have some material in the area um, there were you made it very stiff and then because of that there is a passive resistance increased and because of that it reduces deformation for the shoring wall for the purpose of basement construction to improve traffic ability for construction machinery at the base of the excavation in fact you know if the soil is so poor and uh, you know you can't even walk you know the thing is that uh, uh, you have to make it little more workable so people use uh, li the lime treatment sprinkle lime to increase the strength stiffness of the remaining soft layer for a, a pile raft foundation system that was proposed for a 23 story tower structure you can imagine that the height of the structure is 23 floors and um, you are looking at uh, its uh, improvement of the uh, bearing capacity so up to 23 or 40 meters they have got the uh, static graphic uh, profiles 0 to 8 meters is a soft soil 8 to 13.5 form clay and uh, you have varieties of materials here and uh, s the depth of investigation is quite good like they went to say for example 23 meters is supposed to be the the previous case yeah it is a 23 f uh, floors stories and uh, you can see that the uh, depth of investigation was quite large about 100 meters which is quite good because they have to be very sure about uh, the safety and settlement aspects when you are trying to deal with a technique uh, which you want to be again you want to save on the construction of uh, foundations you cannot uh, provide uh, piles right. So what does this uh, borehole information say there are some number of bores, boreholes you can see the water content is 97 and 100 percent you know it is very high right average is now not it is a very liquid actually right. A liquid limit is about 56 natural water content is more than the liquid limit you can see that plastic limit is there ok plastic index is ok silt is there clay content is there you know which means that it is a a uh, very uh, tricky material you know when you have you know all the boreholes up to uh, 7 meters they say you know you can see that the original shear strength obtained from vane shear test was about 15 kPa for 5 meters so you can they have done you know vane shear testing also. So they have done you know the vane shear testing for 15 kPa and so it increases up to 5 meters is about uh, 20 uh, 15 kPa then it increases with uh, to about 30 kPa at about 8 meters depth ok. These are results for the vane shear untreated ground so after the uh, 5 weeks after following this lift normal event testing was indicated that the shear strength of the soil at the quarter point between the lime columns has increased to 27 to 36 kPa you can see that it is a very good increase right so from 15 kPa it has become almost double uh, so this is that uh, uh, area you know where it is uh, quite uh, comfortable so just like as I just said you are only accounting for uh, we assume that the uh, treatment uh, the effectiveness is because of the uh, what you call uh, the hydration the removal of water then after that there could be long term benefits also and uh, definitely the construction of lime tile uh, piles is much easier and uh, you know it all depends on the, uh, the you know 
it is a small building or whatever or whatever you no know, one should be comfortable people normally you know in any contractor in the west you know you will have all the people ready for it like you know you need to have um, uh, information from uh, stone columns pvds lime columns lime, whatever all that methods are even geo grids everything is there available then you have to make sure that yes it the technique works in a given situation and then try to come out with uh, uh, you know which is cheaper also you know because it, if it is very expensive and you should also have a proper uh, performance monitoring like you know you must be able to do like this a test like this if the test does not allow you to do anything then it is very difficult because how are you sure about the quality of the work done is something very very important and if I cannot uh, give you that the strength improvement will be like this in calculations and also show you later with uh, CPT or SPT. Uh, or any other test that the strength improvement has not uh, is is achieved then uh, if this strength, say for example it is 15 kpa now it's 36 kpa which is quite good right so another case study that i would like to mention uh, this is uh, actually a, 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 a power station in uh, you know near hubli um, uh, about uh, 4 years back what happened was that uh, there are a lot of floods and uh, the substation has uh, um, you know uh, it is founded on actually you have an expense soil uh, everywhere that is an expense soil exists there and then since, since you want to construct uh, simple structures you need to have you know they put uh, remove some soil of expense soil layer and then put some sand, uh, sand cushion or a muram cushion they call it like this is what they do. You can see that these all expense soil here black one you can see that this is one sand cushion they put like say for example people say about uh, 50 centimeters or 2 feet or something then they start constructing uh, things like this you know you have a substation nicely lined up and all that uh, that is uh, what happened was that uh, 4 years back there were severe floods and um, the whole area got inundated and um, there was nobody to even like the whole area you know, there, there was a power cut and all that they shut down everything uh, but then uh, they left it and uh, then they found that after all the drying because of the inundation what happened the whole area got swollen the expanse soil area you know that is there in this area you know you can see that this is also black color this uh, removed soil it is an expanse in nature and uh, the, you can see that uh, it has resulted in uh, deformations like this right it is out of line you know you do not you have to they have to be in line actually you know, all the electrical uh, things have to be very they have a lot of tolerances and you know if you have an expanse soil you should uh, ex the problem with expanse soil is that it heaves and then strings right. So, it could uh, the pop the possibility is that it could cause total settlements as well as different settlements and in this case the problem is that tilt tilt of the you know tilt like this the pole should not be tilted away with respect to something. And the thing is that what type of foundation they have? They will not have any foundation, right? They will have a minimum foundation which could be about 1.2 meters or some 2 meters depending on the type of uh, no whatever they have depending on the junctions, loads coming on that. They have lightly loaded structures, the load that comes on this is much uh, lower compared to the swell pressure. In, in fact, the expansive soil in this area has a lot of swell pressure, it could be about uh, 150 kp and all that. The load that is coming here is so low that definitely you expect uh, you know during the heaving and uh, shrinkage this this could you can this you can see that this out of line actually. Though it may not be visible to the naked eye uh, particularly these are visible and then you know they have to shut down all the operations and then uh, uh, they have to uh, they restored it but the, the problem was that it was not satisfactory. So, um, what I did was that. I did a, a total survey. I know. Uh, I know. I would like to first uh, wanted to know what is the vertical tilt. You know, the vertical tilt is this. Like how much of uh, uh, tilt is there in the pole? Vertical tilt and then the horizontal tilt. Like you know, horizontal tilt of the foundations as well as the vertical tilt of the uh, uh, the vertical members. So, in cases, so we, when we did with the total station. I was able to see that the differences settlement is about 20 mm in 
uh, some cases say for example as I just mentioned it is resting on about 1.2 meters uh, foundation and it got tilted it is about 20 mm though number is small but then this foundation size also very small. The height of the pole is about 2 meters like you know it is uh, electrical poles of 2 to 3 meters average height and there is a tilt is about 69 mm you know you can see it is quite big. And uh, you know the electrical as per the electrical uh, uh, you know uh, tra transformer you know the substation rules and you know they have some guidelines on the erection of these uh, facilities. Uh, the permissible value is about L by 300 which is corresponds to 6.67 mm. So, you can see that the permissible tilt is about uh, 6 to 7 mm whereas, it has already seven, tilted seven, 16 mm which is quite high. So, the tilt is not acceptable. In addition the permissible uh, difference settlement of the isolate foundation is we know that if you see in soil mechanics 1 in 150 is a um, uh, difference settlement allowed. But uh, so this corresponds to about uh, 6.67 mm for 1 meter footing and uh, 10 mm for 1.5 meter footing respectively. So the observed value of 20 mm what I observed was much excess again. So both uh, total and uh, difference settlements were not uh, satisfactory and what we did was that we have to rehabilitate that with some sort of uh, measures um, using like see thing is that uh, now it is already a constructive structure. So, you have to bring it back to the actual condition. So, what we suggested was lime slurry injection. So, the treatment of the expanse soil area using the lime and flash slurry and foundation rehabilitation and drainage measures suggested towards possible improvement of the ground conditions and foundation response. What we did was that uh, since you know the thing is that first of all uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, they did not understand that the expanse soil uh, has such a it creates such a havoc. Uh, so, but then when it has this type of distress you need to solve this issue. So, what we did was that um, the lime about 6 percent lime and also the flash you know as I just said uh, the, uh, the, the liquid limit of this uh, expanse soil is about uh, 85 to 90 percent liquid limit you know and then the shrinkage limit is about 10 percent we got it tested and all that and after that uh, using lime about say 6 percent what is the liquid limit and what are all the limits and all that we got we know that the liquid limit will come down and all that and uh, everything will be all right. And then we also added fly ash why because the you know uh, for a you know it also increases it is a like a mechanical uh, modifier you know fly ash is somewhat coarser and it is also a stabilizing as in as I just mentioned uh, some time back that uh, use of fly ash is also very good. So, lime plus fly ash in the form of a slurry slurry means you mix it at a very high watt content and then pump it under the foundations. So, if you pump under the already the existing foundation actually first thing is that we have to rehabilitate the foundation you know the thing is uh, foundation rehabilitation is very important if something is tilting like this uh, remove the soil from some, some amount of uh, soil somewhere see that it comes back to the original condition. Uh, you have to rehab there are so many electrical poles in the area you have seen many about 40 to 50 poles electrical thing you have to go to the foundation measure the actual uh, uh, movement you have already measured the uh, movement and uh, remove some amount of soil and make it you know structural adjustment of the foundation itself because the foundation itself is not very big actually it can be handled you know it is just maybe 1 meter by uh, 1 meter 2 meter some size. So, you have to apply some sort of load or something and the priest some sort of pressure should be applied or you remove some soil and then remove the pr pressure and all that make make sure that uh, the limits that we got you know like whichever the, it was all exceeding where whichever was I was just mentioning all these are all exceeding see that somehow you bring back to the original condition and then see that these limits are you know achieved for all the poles and um, find do that lime treatment because the problem comes from the actual soil itself like it should not occur. So, first thing is that it, they should be brought back to the actual conditions in some form by uh, loading or removal of soil and whatever and um, in fact the removal of uh, soil to increase the, the to you know to reduce the tilt was done for leaning tower of Pisa itself. You know the leaning tower of Pisa it uh, had a, uh, uh, an inclination that makes it very attractive uh, that is why you know they do not want uh, that leaning tower of Pisa to be perfect. So, they wanted an acceptable uh, inclination there in fact they, they could they were very successful in that and uh, 
same thing you know we have tried to we we are uh, we have uh, suggested here that uh, you remove some amount of soil to see that they uh, uh, it comes back to the actual conditions and it is a structural adjustment by some loading or whatever put some sandbags next to the foundation use uh, some uh, pressing or uh, remove soil and all that and what is uh, whatever you confirm it from your measurements you use your survey to see that it comes back to the actual uh, required levels. Then the foundation treatment was done um, using the flame flash slurry with the uh, following uh, uh, suggested rules and uh, it was uh, expected to be satisfactory. So, uh, what I would like to say is that the stabilization methods using lime, lime columns uh, in fact uh, you should use, use also some additives some if required but though the essential stress is on lime and uh, uh, lime here like one can say you one can use uh, as a just used flash one can also use uh, uh, cement also as I just mentioned to increase uh, the rate of uh, reactions or the formation of the cementitious materials. So, for example, cement itself is quite expensive. So, why do you use cement and you uh, know use only the lime uh, lime and maybe little bit of cement could be used to increase. The, so, if you are able to get a very good strength improvement based on uh, our uh, calculations and observations it is satisfactory you do not need a pile foundation. So, essentially these methods could be used for uh, like uh, uh, payments you know particularly lime treatment is a very uh, uh, an excellent uh, method and also support structures light structures you know the problem with uh, many of the structures is that particularly expansive soils and light structures is a very uh, bad combination that the expansive soils have swell pressure which could be about 100 kp or uh, 150 kp you know not less than that or even it could be you can measure in situ uh, swell pressure also like you can take an analysis sample or you know you can do a lot of tests there. So, the swell pressure should be higher if it is higher than the loading that it is coming uh, it is a serious problem. This problem occurs in many cases in India where the canal linings you know expansive soil is there everywhere in India you are trying to put canal linings and if you have canal linings what happens the lining is so thin like you know it is just a 150 mm concrete slab or some sort of lining and it swells the whole thing is gone and there are so many areas in uh, many places particularly in Maharashtra, Karnataka or even some place in Andhra where the expansive soils have really uh, make made a havoc. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, there is other, some more problems connected with uh, many issues on expansive soils even in, uh, in some place in Andhra Pradesh uh, where uh, say for example, one of the big projects like a Polavaram uh, dam, uh, the, many of the canals have expansive soil layers that are uh, there. Uh, so, one should really understand some of these uh, um, behavioral aspects properly you know you have to measure its expanses, expansive nature in the sense uh, liquid limit, plastic limit you should do disturbed uh, uh, representative samples as well as disturbed samples as well as field samples because what happens is that many of the cases like you know you, I was talking about uh, the swell pressure, swell pressure in the lab is uh, different than in the field because uh, that is very clear. So, if you design the swell pressure uh, for this say for example, if the swell pressure is 150 in the lab you make it only a 50 kp in the field. So, there is a big difference because in the field the sample sizes are you know the it is a big mass and then you have a lot of sample fixtures, fractures and many other things. The swell pressure may not be that much compared to what you do in the lab you know in the lab you know you take an undisturbed sample and then you know even if it is an undisturbed sample the possibility is that it could be little higher because if the sampling itself is uh, you know you are supposed to represent a big volume of soil. So, one should be very careful in uh, uh, characterizing this expansive soil as I just mentioned the other one very important one was that you should not use uh, lime treatment when you have a sulphate uh, uh, bearing layer present. So, you should find out the sulphate uh, content and uh, if it is uh, some um, if it is tolerable within there is some specifications actually given in uh, particularly the codes are you know one must refer to the codes by Texas A Texas uh, department where they have somewhat standardized. So, one can see that and then uh, uh, avoid such problems because you may say that the expense soil uh, is, I mean uh, the treatment using lime may not be uh, you know it is not applicable to all the situations one should be very careful and uh, the other thing was that the even the it is a clay mineral is also very important. So, one should do some more uh, information uh, details on this and uh, 
so one can use this uh, treatment and then one can calculate i just showed you all the calculation methods of calculating uh, total the bearing capacity then uh, difference settlements total settlements and all that one can work out stiffness and all these parameters these are all the calculation methods and finally uh, uh, you should use measure the in the field and um, durability tests also you know in fact in some cases where i just showed you that pay payment for about 10 to 15 years was all right you know it is very good like you know payments do not last for even 6 months but if uh, a lime treated soil can uh, serve for about 10 years it is very good so what i want to say is that this lime take lime uh, is a very useful technique uh, lime addition particularly using uh, lime is quite useful so i have a couple of references in this that um, um where we have uh, some uh, from the home page of a particular company i uh, got some information and also that uh, some it's a research report and also on the uh, uh, from texas uh, and m so i'm sure that uh, you'll have a good understanding of uh, some of this uh, aspects of uh, lime treatment in whether it is an expensive soils and soft soils thank you